We saw you! The Sawyer had a ship! Her eyes began to flicker from gold to the original, clear white and red colors as Diana could do nothing but spasm at the lack of air. Ah, oh, come on! Why? Damn it! What do I do? <sighs> okay. Oh, god damn it. Okay, if I remember from the nightmare, because I'm just assuming that the nightmare is always the bad ending for these roots. I'm assuming because Diana was there. She's alive and everything's okay, right? So I'm assuming if we do stop him, that means Diana will be alive, right? But, but, but he'll, he'll probably be possessed by... Oh my god, I'm gonna pick the wrong thing. I just know I am. I I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna stop him. Fuck. I wasn't sure if stopping him would stop the angel. If James did let go of Diana, what if the angel took control and attempted to choke him instead? It was a complicated situation, but it had to be done to stop the angel from using Diana. As James tightened his grip, Diana arched her back and sprayed in front of saliva and blood, erupted her from her mouth towards the far wall. Oh god, her body continued to quake from the spasm and the lack of air, and her face slowly began to turn blue. Diana's eyes slowly back rolled to the back of her head, finally fading to a gold white, as she dug her nails into James's wrist, finally trying one last time to make him release his grip on her. James would not budge. Ah, oh, what the hell? As Diana's body finally went limp and settled into the marble, a large white aura of smoke wisped into the, out of her chest and shot itself into the throne dais, settling onto the steps and slowly growing taller in place. The white smoke finally formed into a familiar cloak being who was arched forward with veiny- EW! The veiny hand stands up beside him. Something about the angel, however, seemed different than before, as if something gained energy from being with Diana. You filthy cur! You continue to try and defy your destiny when it is useless! Oh no, did Diana have to really die in this? Come on. James stood and glared hard at the angel, forming a sword once again in his hand and pointing it towards his new opponent. His body began to glow and the room began to brighten in, the gold in his golden aura. I have no such destiny to remain in this world. My life is bound to the one I love, not to an empty chair ganged through blood. You will have no choice in the matter! Whoa, like two bullets, James and the angel rushed to e each other and collided with James' sword against the angel's bare hands. Shit, this guy's just fighting with his veiny hands, huh? I expected James' blade to tear through the angel's flesh, but they still pressed against the angel's hands like it was a uh, grazing stone. The angel gripped to James' blade and slowly began to cr crush it beneath his hands, causing the magic surround to falter and fade. James and I stared wide at the angel, was about to rip the broken pieces of the sword and toss it to the side like it was plastic. Oh god. Determined still, James shot his en energy through his sword and reformed the blade, once going once again for another attack to only be blocked by the angel's forearms. Upon impact, the steel of the blade shattered like glass, falling to the ground. I am no mere servant of heaven, Damon. I am the keeper of destiny, the scribe of fates. You cannot defeat me no matter what spells you conjure. Yo, what do we do? Where is- God damn it, where is Seto? How many times do we have to call for him? <laughs> Upon his final words, the angel pressed his hand forward and slammed him against James's chest, forcing him to fly back and slam into the far wall. <laughs> James! I instantly began to rush towards him. I found himself being lifted off of the ground by the back of my neck and pulled away from James towards the angel. No! Ah! No! No! Please tell me I am not gonna die, I swear to God. I- Oh God. I grabbed the back of my neck, feeling the angel's tight grip around it and keeping my body afloat somehow. His hands felt indeed like stone and concrete, grazing against my skin roughly, almost tearing the flesh as I struggled. Let me go! I should have forced you to choose from the beginning, demon. This human will not see reason to let you go. But I know that you will see reason in the offer I will graciously give you now. The angel held my body out, dangling me in the air like a doll. As I filled and clawed at the angel's arms, my nails merely scratched against the stone, the stone skin as I felt my energy slowly deplete even farther into my spirit. Accept your fate, demon, and I will bring her back to the human world unharmed. Refuse, oh, no, and dude, I will release her fuck? to the gates of hell for the devil spawn to ravish. As James, as as he spoke of James's potential refusal, a wave of heat burst up beneath my feet, causing me to look down and scream at the side of the ground. Oh my God! Beneath my body was a large open circle with red flames flaring out of it. Between the flames, I could barely make out the sight of hundreds of hands reaching up, trying to stretch themselves through the hole above them towards me. Each hand, burnt in red, sent waves of remembrance down my body as an image of Malik appeared in my head. 
Oh my goodness. Did I do the wrong thing? Come on! My fear only spurred to me to feel harder in the hold I, I was in. I'm carrying of the friction in his hand causing my skin. I could feel blood grabbing and dribbling from the back of my neck, flesh tearing open into my attempts. James stared up at me, quaking in fear of the situation. We were far apart from him, where he could reach me if he, if he sprinted as I dropped. I was left to James's decision. However, something in James's eyes changed. A dark gold painted his eyes as his body began to float in the air. Let her go! Fuck! As you wish! No! Oh no! I, I, oh god, what the fuck? A gas managed to rush through my body as the angel's hand and my neck vanished without a trace. My body began to fall to the open pit below me. A wave of intense heat ravaged into my life before I felt a strong pair of arms wrapped around me and pulled me forward. What? Look up to see James. Oh, what? Whoa, how fast is he? I looked up to see James gripping me tightly, flying back away from the angel with me encased in his tight hold. As we reached the doorway of the main hall, James landed to set me down, keeping his intense glare on the angel by the throne. As the angel made their way towards us, I could feel the air become colder with each step he took. You cannot smite me, demon. It is useless to try. If I cannot kill you, then I will send you to a place you can never escape from. What? James, determined to the sand, formed a large wall between himself and the angel, pushing him back. The angel, unimpressed, chopped the wall over and over in his attempts to dispel it, but found no, but found it to be impenetrable. What? How? James no longer listened as he continued forward, forcing the angel back into the balance of his feet over the edge of the hell pit. However, despite each rough uh, push James gave him, the angel continued to balance himself. With a burst of white light, the angel completely dissolved the magic wall, jutting upwards and floating high in the air, tense and growling. James, however, wouldn't let him hang around for long. Bursting with energy, James pounced off the ground and flew into the air at the angel. As he flew, James formed his sword, clashing it against the angel's body. The blade didn't break, but simply pounded against the cloak the angel wore like it was hitting the armor. The angel became frazzled as it began to defend himself against the new enraged power of James, who was not giving him an ounce of mercy in his attack. It was almost dizzying to see James fly at their target, taking shots of him at a ridiculous speed. Each, as, each hit resulted with a large clang of steel and stone against the of the room in an endless random cycle. Watching James encircle the angel with attack was like watching gold fireworks going off in the moon. Suddenly, James kicked the angel's back, causing him to, sp uh, to separate and, and the angel to almost flip back in the recoil. The incubus didn't falter as he gathered his energy into his blade, making it gleam in an almost, enthrill almost enthralling godlike godlike glow. The, as the angel regained his upward position, he froze in the air of what he saw. No! It's over! Whoa! With a large shout, James shot himself forward and impaled the sword into the angel's body, successfully ramming it through the body and skewering the angel. Ah! Damn! Gold lightning wrapped around the angel and James's blade, causing the wings on the back to burn away into bones and then into ash. The angel's hand slowly began to darken into an ashy black color from the electrocution. James ripped his blade from his victim, leaving him afloat in the air for a moment, frozen from the from the pain. As the angel began to fall, he let out a deadly scream before falling into the into the hell pit below. Yeah! Fuck you! <laughs> the angel's body vanished into the hell pit before a large burst of red and orange flame burst from its opening. The chaotic scream from the devils erupted from the pit as the flame began to die out and vanish. Soon enough, the pit slowly closed itself. Having been fed, fed a proper body to steal it away. I collapsed onto my knees, feeling the drain of the entire situation hit me like a ferocious wave. It was over. It was over at last, but for how long? The entire situation became a chaotic mess. James forced the angel of fate into the pit of hell. Does this mean James was free? What about the angel? That's so true. Is it like, is the mark lifted off of him? That's what I don't get. Also, Diana's fucking dead. Like, nobody's talking about this. Too many questions rang into my he my head, but stopped by James landed beside me as he knelt down as he knelt down to me, lifting my chin and making me look up at him. He looked worn out, panting for air from the experience, but he still but he still had a kind smile. How are you smiling after this? <laughs> it was so satisfying feeling James with me. I barely noticed the black scar on his chest vanish from his skin as I became lost in his eye. Oh, okay, so we're not marked anymore. Thank God. It, it's over now. I could only nod, feeling the slow growth of the el elation trickle into my chest as I looked up at James. He was alive, we were still together, and the angel was gone. If it was over, I was sure that the other angels would have come for us. I wrapped my arms around James, relieved that the everything was over and we were at peace at last. It's over. 
James and I held each other tightly, taking in the situation. The war was over. The angel hunt for James was apparently over. We were safe now, and we could go home. But Diana's dead! Again! <laughs> All we could do now was let out a sigh and cherish the silence that followed. We would go home soon. Well, you did it! Congratulations! You've made it to the end of your story. I have to say, I am very surprised at how it turned out. Wait, excuse me, hello, I still have a question. We're not going to talk about Diana. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm glad things worked out in the end, whether it was for the better or otherwise. I mean, not only did James defeat his father, the dreaded demon lord, but both of you took out a band of angels! Seriously! That's wild! But I guess it was for the best, or else they would have kept trying to hunt you down and make James the king of the demon world. Angels. So persistent. Anyways, you've been through a lot, so why don't we skip to... Huh? You want to know what happened after... After the war was finished, the entire rebellion celebrated. Words spread far and wide about the rebellion's success, and soon every kingdom in the abyssal plains had become united with the new authority. But Sienna, what the hell? You would think demons would be more hostile towards each other, being demons and all, but the threat of the demon lord was what brought the entire world together. When Diana's body was found, the entire rebellion wept. Even the rebel leaders, no. and especially Sarah. Why is it Despite always the war being over and celebrations being the highlight of the night following it, the death of their queen became the dreadful morning news. She was given a public cremation, watched by the entire rebellion army, and when her body became ashes, Sarah took the remains to a tree sacred to her family, burying her ashes at the roots. No, I feel so bad for Sarah. What, what the did fuck? Sarah do then? Well, you see, since Saro is, well, since he's half angel, his angel blood prevents him from letting him take his own life, no. as it's inscribed on their blood by heaven, that they will live until time or their enemies end them. None of the rebel leaders would agree to take his life, and every demon in the abyssal plains came to respect him too much to challenge him. So he simply sits at the foot of Diana's family tree, desperate. What to the away. fuck? Come on, this is so messed up. It's like you know that episode of Futurama with uh, Fry's dog. Remember when he got when he got frozen? The dog was like waiting for him to come back, and then he never came back. It's essentially what fucking Sarah was doing, just waiting by Diana's grave to die, but he can't die. This is so messed I think up. He's still there now. No. Poor Saro. No! Michaela, why would you do that to Saro? A anyway, the other rebel oh, leaders, desperate to make sure that her death wouldn't be in vain, brought themselves together and swore to bring the world to the peace they believed she imagined it to have. To the surprise of many, oh. they did a pretty decent job. They slowly started to work at breaking the caste system and organized trade on every inch of the world. All of it in the Wait, memory. So who's leading the, the demon succubus. world? Is it just everybody in general? And I believe that is everything that happened after well, except for your story anyway. James and you returned home and prepared once again for your marriage. <laughs> everything was taken care of before he found you, so no one knew the wiser. Huh? Uh, how do I know? <laughs> well, I have my ways. I'm fucking upset. I can't believe this. Sarah is just like suffering in every room. What the hell? God damn it. Let Sarah be a thing. Why? The wedding was perfect. The reception even more so. Everything that happened to me before the wedding was completely washed away by, by the nerves that have rushed through me and the joy that I felt as I finally said I do. After the wedding bells chimes and cheers rang through the air as James and I finally kissed, I could almost see my future laid out before me and it was gorgeous. I could go on and on about the wedding and the honeymoon, but honestly, after the war, I was more concerned about living my life afterwards. Our lives escalated to new heights after we officially became husband and wife. James helped the Anderson Toy Company skyrocket through the business world, now an official Anderson heir. I stood beside him, aiding him in every way possible. As for me, I began to go through my own success in life, dedicating myself to whatever becoming exactly what I wanted to be. After all, my husband was the CEO. Nothing was bared for me. Nothing was bared for me. If I had put the same amount of work as he did, as I did in the demon world, then I would be. I, then I was going to be okay. However, there was not never a day that went by that I didn't think about what was happening in the abyssal plains. 
It was with heavy, it was a heavy chapter in my life, one that was tested in love between me and James. The memory of the angels that chased after us would always run shivers down my spine, reminding me that at any moment an angel could lash out and and lash out at us once more. Still, I was confident that we would get through it, get through it, and stay no matter what, and stay together no matter what came our way. De demon, devil, angel, it didn't matter to us. We were unstoppable together. Faint memory of my own power slightly tingled through me every time I grew confident. The ego eagerly reminded me that I had the strength of my own. I would never let anyone come between me and James ever again. The slow settling of it all rum rumbled in my mind as I laid in bed holding James close to me. I was so happy to see him every every morning, even more so now, to occasionally glimpse his wedding ring resting on his finger. Oh, <laughs> look at him, he's so, uh, he's so cute, okay. Uh, I, I couldn't help myself but from brushing my fingers over his gorgeous black locks, staring at his closed eyes. How did I deserve you? It seems so unreal, holding him close to me. How lucky I was to have the man who not only was strong, but also intelligent and charming. All in one package. The demon part of him almost became an extra dab of uh, cream on top. Whenever I looked at him, my heart would be overflow with joy. This was indeed a true love, and I could, and I was the luckiest person in the universe. I softly leaned in and kissed his forehead, needing to show my love, even as he slept. He, he protected me with his arms around me, and I would show him my gratitude for as long as we were together. My kiss, however, slowly made James uh, began to stir in my arms as I gasped a bit and before giggling, seeing his eyes slowly flutter open. The sight of his tired, whiskey-colored eyes made my heart do giddy flips, knowing that they would always look at me out of love. Good morning. Good morning. Aww. Okay. <laughs> James nuzzled into the pillow beneath his head, taking a moment to wake up at the last before smiling at me. I smiled back, slight Sliding my body closer to James and nuzzling my, his chest. How'd you sleep? <laughs> I slept well, but waking up to your smile is so much better. <laughs> oh, God, he's so sweet. <laughs> um, a red blush rushed across my face before I buried my face in James' shoulder, making him laugh and hug me against his chest. The content hum that rumbled in his chest made, my sm made me smile despite the embarrassment on my cheeks. I was going to experience this every morning, waking him up in his arms, feeling completely within them. James gently kissed over my head before squeezing around my waist, making me look up at him and become lost in his loving gaze. What about you? I let a cheesy grin paint across my face before pecking his chin with my lips slightly, making him stare wide at me in surprise and amusement. Sleep was good, but I'd rather be awake with you. James chuckled and kissed my forehead, hugging me tightly to him. <laughs> well then, what shall we do today? Sitting! Let's go, Ori! Right. <laughs> huh? Don't you have work? James shook his head and he caressed my cheek lovingly. I unconsciously nuzzled into his uh, into his palm, loving the warmth radiating from it. As I stared at James patiently listening. I managed to grab a couple days off. How many days? <laughs> How does a whole week sound? Yeah! I grinned and, and squeezed him slightly in a hug of my own, making him laugh a bit and kiss my nose sweetly. You're all mine for a week? For a whole week. No, I'm all yours regardless of that. To hear him claim that made my heart skip a beat. No one else liked cutting to him, but... Resting my head on his chest, listening to his heartbeat as he cradled my head to him and he, as he, uh, and he rested his cheek against my ear. So, any ideas? We could go into Chicago and watch a couple of shows, or we could even fly out somewhere if you want. Damn, because we have a rich husband. <laughs> and we could do anything? Anything you want. I thought for a moment, trying to decide what to do. There were so many things available to us, but I felt that myself melt into James's embrace. I closed my eyes and rubbed my head against his chest. How about we lay here for a bit and decide later? With a nod and a laugh, James gave me a loving squeeze and shifted my, and shifted to make himself comfy, allowing me to use his chest as a pillow. While the idea of adventuring was enticing, we could save it for when we were ready and to really get out of bed. As my beautiful wife wishes. Ah, <laughs> I love you, James. James lifted his chin slightly and stared deep into my eyes with an adoring gaze and smile, making every part of me practically swoon at the sight. I love you too. More than anyone in the world. Aww, so I will sweet. always be here beside you every morning and every night for as long as we live. I believed every word. I let his words embed themselves into my heart and I would remember them forever. As James finally kissed me, locking, locking lips with mine, he finally sealed his words. His destiny was to be with me and I was to be with him. No angel could change that. No demon could break that. And that was my perfect happily ever after. Woo! 
it's over. I am still upset about friggin' Saro though. What the hell? Michaela, how could you do that to the cyanus ship? <laughs> Every fucking route. They have to suffer. What is this? I, I really found um James's route interesting with the whole angels. But I, I know I was like uh looking at like what other people thought about um James's route and I could see um a lot of people were confused just because they didn't hold, understand the whole, like, angel concept and stuff. Which, I can get, it can get really confusing, but I found it really interesting that they incorporated it, that Michaela incorporated, I should say Michaela incorporated it into the whole Demon War stuff. But, it kind of, how do I say it, it kind of took away from the whole, we're fighting against your father kind of thing. Because it was more focused on the angels rather than the father. Because I felt like the, the angels were more of a bigger threat than... The Demon Lord, which was obvious, obviously enough, it was. Um, I just don't like that fucking Sarah and Diana suffered. <laughs> I'm so upset about that. Oh, by the way, we haven't done the bad ending. We should go do that right now and suffer and cry, cause you know. Okay, let's see if I stop him. This will this trigger the bad ending or not? I have no idea. I need to stop him before he killed her. The angel wasn't worth it, her death. I rushed forward and grabbed onto James's arm, making him look up at me as I knelt down beside him. James, stop it! You'll kill Diana! James stared at me, taking in what I said, with the same surprised look before looking down at the succubus beneath him, glaring hard. Was he going to kill her anyway? Come out and fight me! With a burst of energy surging through James's hand, Diana arched, her, arched back and spade of fr frothy saliva and blood erupted from her mouth towards the far wall. James's grip on had, loose had loosened against her neck, but Diana's body continued to spasm from James's attack. Diana rolled her eyes back into the van, fading into the Did she die? Oh god damn it, she dies regardless! On James's words, a large set of purple and thrilled uh, tendrils snaked around the angel's hands and neck, tugging him back roughly. James and I looked back to see Diana. Oh, come on! Are you fu- I am fucking done! Wait a second! Can you save Diana in this? Did I kill Diana again like I did in Eric's? Oh, come on. The fuck! Fuck! <laughs> alright, alright. James and I looked back to see Diana, risen from her unconscious state and her glaring daggers at the back of the angel's cloak, and her hand connected to her and, and tendrils around the target. Oh my god, I killed Diana again. Oh my god. I'm a terrible person. It was madly frightening to see her eyes completely coated in gold, just like James's eyes as she snelled back into now captured victim. How dare you defile me! Yes, bitch! <laughs> James in re retaliation formed a large wall between himself and the angel. I'm I'm actually legit upset. I didn't know you could fucking save her. Oh my god. What? Next! Whoa, what is Diana doing? At the hair cry, a purple and black lightning began to spout out and shake around the angels uh, around the angel and Diana, freezing them in the air but electrocuting both. James! No! Then he was sinner falter as he gathered his energy into his blade, making it gleam almost an internal godlike glow. No! It's over! Oh, I like this ending better! Diana's, like, helping us! Oh, come uh, on! Uh, Settle! <laughs> no! Oh, no! It's Sarah is here! Can we pretend that I didn't kill her earlier? Oh, my God! This is so much better! On her command, a burst of white light in in emerged in front of her body before revealing her half-angel guard. Looking around him in his new surroundings and locking his eyes, sights down on his fallen mistress. Hey, Sayer! Oh, <laughs> the Sayana ship! <laughs> Quickly started to drop to his knees and placed his hands over her uh, her wound while he wrapped his arm around her shoulder and back. Diana Winston continued to pant for air, gritting her teeth. What happened? Who did- Shut up and heal me. Yo, if, he, if, if Sarah knew James did that, he would like cut him. Oh my god. Sarah nodded in quick obedience before muttering to himself and closing his eyes. White energy flowed through his hands and onto Diana's room. Uh, to my astonishment, the wound slowly began to close and zip together like it was never there. As Diana let it aside, her eyes closed and relaxed to Seto's arms, laying her head against his upper arm. Seto let out a breath of relief as well, moving his hand beneath beneath Diana's knees and lifting up, lifting her up right of style. James and I stood as Seto, as soon as Seto did, facing him to turn us and glare hard at James. I gripped onto James's hand, stepping forward in between the boys as Seto began to walk towards us. What happened? We fought an angel. It has been properly disposed of. The air in the room once again chilled as Seto kept his stare on my husband. A faint white glow surrounding his body. It faded, however, as the, mis 
That is Mistress's voice. Settle. Cyril looked down to see Diana looking up at him and bringing his hand to his ch to his cheek. The tension in his eyes faded at the sight and feel of her action, making me release a fearful breath I was holding in. Thank God, because uh, Cyril would kill both of us, honestly. Without another word against my incubus, Cyril turned and walked around me and James. As he reached the door, however, he turned, into he turned his head towards us. It would seem that your destiny has been broken. Well done. Thank you. How do you know this? Wait. What? Oh, yeah, because he doesn't know that Sarah's an angel, right? Sarah didn't speak again before leaving us alone. Okay, let's pretend that I didn't kill Diana early and pretend this is the real ending. Now let's go to the real bad ending. <laughs> okay, I think I got the bad ending. We'll find out. Let's see what happens now. So this is when, after the angel has a hold of me and holding me above the, the hell pit. James stared up at me, quaking from the fear of the situation. We were far away from him, where he could he couldn't reach me even if he sprinted as I dropped. I was left to James's decision. James's body began to rumble in despair as James dropped to his knees and oh no, slammed his hands onto the onto the marble ground. My heart dropped at his words. I accept my fate. No, James. I accept my fate. No, release her. Oh, please tell me he's not gonna t pull a bullshit move and just drop me. Obediently, the angel loosened his grip on my neck and... You bitch! As the hole beneath me closed. As my feet touched the ground, the angel fully released me and watched as I rushed over to James, sliding my sliding onto my knees before him. James, no! Say your farewell to her, demon. I will grant her that much before I take her back. I wrapped my arms around him, desperately not to let go. I wouldn't be separated from James ever. James, so I wrapped an arm around me and buried his head into my shoulder. His- Oh no, his tears falling over it. I said. Fuck you, I'm not leaving- Yeah, fuck you, bitch! James slowly stood over me in his arms, causing me to stand on my own two feet as well. He pulled away, looking down at me, tears flowing down his cheeks. I love you. I will forever love you until the day I die. No! James? James gently cuffed my head in his hands and kissed me, shaking in his grief as he did. I, however, could only stare in disbelief. Was he really going to let me go? I felt a small drop open beneath me, causing the air around me to encirculate and rush for, past my body before feeling one of James's hands lower him, lower to my sternum and push me back. No! Oh, come on! With a gasp, I watched as James kept his hands instantly out to me, <clears throat> extended out to me while my body became sucked into the, some sort of portal. White feathers danced around the barrier of my mind and flood my memories that slowly evaporated them the farther one- And they're erasing my, my, my memories too? This is really sad! Tears continued to drip down James's face- James's cheeks as my memories began to fray and burn, causing tears to form in my eyes as well. Our marriage, our embraces, our love, it turned to ash and vanished from my mind. Soon enough, the sight around me became a pure white, and I could remember nothing but my name. That's sad. I don't like that one. So we don't even remember James at all. That's really sad. I don't like that. Why do I keep ending these Let's Plays on the bad ending, dude? What the hell's wrong with me? I don't like that one. But damn it. I should have saved Diana. That was my mistake. But still. Um. I'm sad now. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, the, this route of James, please let me know in the comments what you thought about it. I'm just sad now. I don't like that. That one's really sad. When we come back to Seduce Me, I'm gonna take a break from Seduce Me for a few weeks and then uh, I'll return again with uh, Damien's route. Um, don't like this ending! <laughs> Um, anyway, if you guys want to catch up with the other routes, I'll have a link to the description to the playlist if you haven't seen the other ones. Um, and also, if you guys would like to support Michaela Laws, who is the creator of this game and the voice of Diana, I'll leave a link to her stuff in the description. Also, to her Patreon, if you can donate to it so she can make more games. And um, if you guys want to check out uh, Bradley Gareth, who is the voice of James, I'll have a link to his stuff as well. And um, I'm just going to go cry now. I'm really sad. I don't like this <laughs> God damn it! Uh, anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to, to join the companions and cry with me! Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you! Bye!
We closed the breach twice, and my own hand wants to kill me. Could one thing in this fucking world just save this? <laughs>